Democratic Republic of the Congo, early 2000s. Thomas Labanga Dialogue seizes the Ituri region, where the country's entire gold mining is located. Controlling Congo's gold, he establishes his own party, the Union of Congolese Patriots. However, their patriotism extends only to the Hema ethnic group, while the Lenda ethnic group, according to these patriots, was destined for complete annihilation. Even the Hema did not feel safe as they were obligated to pay a special tax, with their own children aged 8 to 15 serving as the backbone of Dialo's army. If a traditional Congolese funeral mask were made for each person who perished due to Dialo's actions, they would number in the tens or even hundreds of thousands. Perhaps Dialo would have escaped unpunished if not for the International Criminal Court. On March 14, 2012, he became the first person in history to receive a guilty verdict from the International Criminal Court for creating an army of child soldiers. And, as described in the Judgment Day, neither extravagant wealth nor his own army could save him from the verdict. Greetings, Wanderer. Today we embark on a trial feared even by the mighty of this world, a trial depicted on the oldest tarot cards. The Judgment Day. The Divine Court. A pivotal event in the three major world religions. Even the oldest surviving tarot decks contain cards depicting the Judgment Day. Whether in the Visconti Sforza deck or the deck of Charles VI, we see the same narrative. Archangel's trumpet in the heavens, resurrecting the dead and announcing the beginning of God's judgment. The same moment is depicted in the lower part of Michelangelo's famous fresco in the Sistine Chapel. Ironically, during the creation of this masterpiece, the artist himself was accused of immorality and even heresy. The Pope's ceremonial master, Biagio de Sassine, protested. This is no work for the chapel of the head of the Catholic Church, but for a public bath or tavern. In response, Michelangelo depicted Sassine in hell as King Minus, with donkey ears, naked but for a snake wrapped around him. In the Rider Waite deck, we also see the Archangel blowing the trumpet from the heavens, with the dead rising from their graves. On the Archangel's trumpet, a white flag with a red cross flutters. This is the flag of St. George, the Dragon Slayer. St. George can be seen, for example, on the coat of arms of the city of Moscow. And the white flag with a red cross has been the flag of England since the time of King Richard the Lionheart. The resurrected do not wear clothes, symbolizing that before God's judgment, all are equal, whether kings or paupers. Until the 18th century, no one could have imagined that a ruling monarch could be brought to trial. That changed in December 1792 in France. Louis XVI appeared before the National Convention, and Freemason Bertrand Barrère read to him. Louis, the people accuse you. On December 3rd, the National Assembly decided that you would be tried by it. The mere fact of such an accusation was already astounding. But what shocked Europe was the king's death sentence on 33 counts of charges, including treason and mass murder of his own citizens. On January 21, 1793, Louis XVI met his end on the guillotine. His wife, Marie Antoinette, suffered the same fate nine months later. These events later became the basis for numerous conspiracy theories about the all-powerfulness of Freemasons and their influence on the politics of all nations in the world. Nearly a century and a half later, another Freemason, Aleister Crowley, attempted his own revolution, but this time through tarot cards. In his book, The Book of Thoth, he explicitly writes that he decided to completely depart from the image of the Judgment card. In his version of the card, we see the goddess Nut. Ancient Egyptians believed that she lifted the deceased to the heavens and guarded the tombs. Inside Nut is her husband, Hadit, depicted as a fiery sphere on the card. Inside Nut and Hadit, we see their son, Horus, 
a god with the head of a falcon and the body of a human. According to Crowley, all of this symbolizes a new era filled with rapid technological advancements in transportation and communication, but in reality, it represents the Dark Ages that began in the 20th century and will last for 500 years. But even this prediction does not seem darker than the narrative of the Judgment card in the Pagan Tarot. A woman under hypnosis recalls a past life where she witnessed the execution of the Salem witches. This trial did indeed take place in the United States, in the state of Massachusetts, in 1692. As evidence of guilt, the visions of two girls, aged 9 and 11, were accepted. As a result, 14 women and 5 men were convicted and hanged, while two died in prison, and one was crushed to death by huge stones. The presiding judge was William Stoughton, who had no legal education. This is what the house of one of the judges who passed the sentence looks like now. Five years after the mass execution, the judges officially acknowledged that they had made a judicial error which saved the lives of 33 people who were also under investigation. On the other hand, the legend of King Solomon tells of an ideal judicial decision. <laughs> Two women brought him a living and a dead baby, asking him to resolve their dispute. Both claimed to be the mother of the living child. Solomon thought for a moment and said to the guard, Cut the living child in half, so that each woman will receive an equal portion. The first woman agreed, believing it fair for both to be left without a child. The second woman, however, pleaded, pointing at her rival. Give the baby to her, just don't kill him. Solomon listened carefully and commanded. Give the child to the second woman, her love is selfless, only a true mother can love like that. In most decks, the judgment card is number 20. However, in the deck of the French occultist Attila, it is an exception and bears the number 16. Although the narrative is identical, an angel blows the trumpet in the heavens, heralding the judgment of the Lord over mankind. Lastly, let's return from the heavens to the earthly realm. The first court established to settle international disputes was the Permanent Court of Arbitration, created at the Hague Peace Conference in 1899. The initiative for its establishment came from Emperor Nicholas II of the Russian Empire. It is from this court that the World Tribunals and later the International Criminal Court emerged. This gives us hope that even the powerful of this world cannot commit crimes without punishment. And with that, my tale of the Judgment Card has come to an end. It is now time to embark on the next journey through the world of tarot.